Now, I've had some incredible guests on this show, but nobody quite got me like Caron. That's an unbelievable responsibility to carry that you think about it wasn't that long ago that, you know, just because of the colour of your skin, you wouldn't have the opportunities that I have. And you're now... And I wanted him to see us at the door when he left to remember what he's leaving. And then he drove off and that was the last time I saw him alive. Not many people make me cry, but for some reason she bloody gets me. Hard times with real true friends. And I always remember that because it's the truest saying known to man. One thing that can absolutely hurt you in the deepest way possible mm -hmm. has the ability to be a gift if you can see it like that. The grief was just... It floored me. You can't die. My our baby's just there. You can't die. Welcome back, everybody, to the Rich in Success podcast, the show that brings you motivation, education, and inspiration on how you can live a happier, healthier, more successful, and more fulfilling life. My name is Matt Hall. I am your host and compare, and thank you, as always, for joining us on this show. Now, this week's guest is a great friend of mine, and she's an absolute inspiration to many, many people around the world. Karen Cummins. This is a lady who has overcome huge adversity in her life and turned it to advantage. This is a lady that's not allowed real trauma to hold her back. She's allowed it to be something that can be a catalyst to help others on a great scale. She is a parent, she is a business owner, she is a coach, and she puts on some incredible events every single year, all featured around female empowerment. And we've got to say that today's episode was a little bit of a first. Now, I've had some incredible guests on this show, and often we talk about some really deep, powerful topics, but nobody quite got me like Caron. In today's episode, not once but twice, I literally found myself, well, I was going to say close to tears, but that would be a lie because tears, they appeared. <laughs> they were in my eyes. So this really hit me, um, listening to Caron, listening to her perspective and really reflecting on what she's been through and continues to overcome on a daily basis, truly got me engaged in an emotional way. So Get the tissue box at the ready. You may need it. I know that I did and Jimmy didn't supply once again. So cheers, Jimmy, for letting me down. Um, but honestly, I am so grateful to Karen for this episode. I know that this will be an incredibly powerful but also moving episode to listen to. So please enjoy episode 162, Finding Gratitude in Grief with Karen Cummins. And just before we dive straight into today's Rich in Success podcast episode, I wanted to share with you what becoming a Rich in Success member could actually do for your life. Now, if you're somebody that is at a point where you're serious about positive change, whether that be in your health, your well-being, your mindset, your business, your career, your finances, or your relationships, the Rich in Success membership is perfect for you. For just £39 a month, you get access to over 40 trading videos where I'll be taking you through everything from goal setting, we'll be looking at high performance habits, we'll be looking at different changes you can make to your mindset and your attitude that are gonna be able to propel you to have more success in every single area of your life. And in addition to these training videos, every month, you will get a live group coaching call with me where you can ask me any questions about the content or about things that you're going through in your life so that I can help you personally as your coach. And as well as that, there will be exclusive bonus interviews with experts in a variety of fields. I'm bringing together the best minds, the best experts from all around the world to give you access 
to the very best content to help you move forward in your life. All this for just £39 a month, reoccurring subscription that you can cancel at any time. To become a Rich in Success member today, please click the link below or head on over to richinsuccess.com where you can sign up there. And I will look forward to seeing you in the exclusive members area very soon. First and foremost, I just want you to do a Liverpool accent. <laughs> really? <laughs> do a Liverpool accent? All right, accent. hold on. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. How can this cereal taste so chocolatey? Proper, ma. Proper. I can't believe oh, it. I, hang on. Is that the only accent you can do? How many accents can you do? I can probably. I, well, I'm from London, so I could probably do a Cockney accent if I want to. Essex, maybe. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so, um, right. So I really don't like that. Or you know, why we went down to the shop there? <laughs> I feel like you really took the mick out of me. It really doesn't work for me. That, like isn't that. it weird how an accent transforms? Like even the way you look, I'm like, really? I actually, yeah, it changes someone oh totally. Oh my gosh, really, man? I don't think so. Oh my I, god, I feel like I'm the same person. That's all the really time. good. So the only one I cannot do at all is Australian, as we were just saying. Can you do Australian? I don't really think I can, but my daughter's really good at it. She's really good at. It. She does something like she goes, um, uh, what she says something called. Um, Skinny Ava, Skinny Noah. Hey, that's close. Skinny that's Noah. closer than I get. Skinny Noah. I, li- <laughs> she I, said something like that. Yeah, like, I can <laughs> do a little bit of most accents, like mm-hmm. okay. Do then, you know. then they start doing Australian, and I literally go, I just don't know how to make that work. I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> but that was close. Yeah, really. Good eye, mate. That's yeah, that. that's all right. That's Good all right. I mean, it's not your best. It's not you're, my best. You're better. Yeah, that's but you're better, getting closer. Yeah. Um, Caron, the. The thing that I always think about you is you just scream inspiration. And I know that you you have empowered a lot of people and helped a lot of people. But the thing I want to touch on really today is, you know, people see you showing up, doing amazing events. They see you, you know, putting yourself out there to help others on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important as a coach. Mm. because you're leading from the front. You're not just going, go out there. This is how you build confidence. You're actually pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think you've also got a lot of experience of hardship. Yes. Yes, a lot of hardship. It's not just glam. You put on Mm -hmm. these beautiful events, these glossy, you know, award ceremonies. Mm -hmm. But it all stems from an awful lot of overcoming hardship. Yeah. Talk to us about your journey. Like, how have you got to this stage where you're now coaching others, building businesses, putting yeah. on events? Do you know, in regards to the events, I just feel like they are glossy, but it's behind the hardship, you know. But at the same time, you've got to remember, we deserve the best as people. We deserve to have glossy events where we are feeling amazing, where we look amazing, yeah. where we where we have a purpose for attending that event. Sometimes we just go out just to get our, let our hair down but then we go home and we're, we're 100 pounds skinner because we've blown money on a, uh, on an outfit and mm. it, and bought loads of drinks on a night out but didn't really have much purpose i guess yeah. but these we it have was purpose all just that external p- yeah. drink party fun but what's the meaning yeah behind it? and i wanted that so basically um i was in a job well i lost my partner um seven years ago actually eight years in in may no april and um when i lost him it was just a difficult time for me. The mm. grief was just, it floored me, absolutely. I didn't expect it. Um, he died sudden, suddenly of an anaphylactic shock. People don't ever know, people say, they hear that he's, yeah, my partner died, mm. but they don't really know why he died. And I, and I feel like, I've told them before, but I feel like I feel like they're afraid to ask me. Yeah. But I don't I don't mind talking about it. If anything, I like talking about it because it's a part of my life and it's a part of me. Mm. So I, if if I'm gonna hide back and and be like, oh, don't talk to me and don't tell me, any, don't ask me any questions, how is anybody else gonna grow? How am I gonna yeah. grow? And it's always been about self development. I have been through a lot of hardships, but I don't look at the situations that I've been through and look at it as a way to keep me down. Mm. I look at it as a learning curve and a way to motivate me to do better and to then share my success with other people so they can do better in their lives your, your partner was so young as well How he was old? 24 he was 24 he was 24 um, i was and i was um 
26 when he passed away and it was a very difficult time yeah it's really difficult he was so young we just had a baby together we were planning our future and he lived in Cumbria and I lived in I lived in Leeds so the two of us together mm. like we used to come down every every two weeks and stuff because he was like setting getting everything ready to like move in with with us and um so he would train as well because he was doing MMA fighting so when he would train um he would come he would be away you know like you know, training for his his fights, matching their weight and all that kind of stuff. So we didn't see him for a little while. So when he when he passed, it was just a really hard thing to take because we just had a baby. So yeah. when he was away, we, he would play, he would email me a lot and text me a lot. So I've still got all the texts and emails and he would email me all his dreams for us. So I've still got all the emails and wow. everything. So, but I'm glad that happened because I think everything worked out for a reason because now my son can see the dreams his dad had for, for him and his life in, 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 in his own words. So I love Could it. Could you share some of that? What what were some of the dreams? So his dreams was right. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. Be, I'm gonna become a security guard because I'm because I'm hard because <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, an yeah. MMA fighter. So yeah. I'm gonna become a security guard. I'm gonna make. I wanna make. A, I wanna make about at least one hundred one thousand five hundred pound a month minimum, yeah. just so that I could take care of you and take care of our son and and make sure that we have a good life. Um, I wanna make sure that you're happy and that you're treated like the princess that you deserve to be treated like. Oh. And I, I've still I've I've screenshot that and every so often i share that on my social media sometimes because i just wanted people to see how much he loved me and us mm. yeah it's beautiful so, yeah can you talk to us about that grief yeah and that like, period immediately after and, and where you're at now with that right so when the grief happened when it first happened i felt like the floor had been removed from underneath my feet and that's mm. the only way i can describe it i felt like I was up in the air. Everything that I'd ever known and loved was up in the air. So I felt like, I felt like, um, how do I get back to being sane? You know, like I felt like I'm gonna lose my mind here. Yeah. How can the person that I love die? Why? We've got a baby here. We have, we have my daughter here. We have a whole future. He's Christian's next week. How you you can't you can't die. My our baby's just there. You can't die. Mm. You know that's what I felt like at the time. And I remember just looking, thinking, my daughter needs me. My son needs me. Grabbed them both. Called a taxi. Went to my mum's house. And I went back to being a five year old child. Mummy, I need you. Yeah. And she was just like crying for her daughter, who's just gone through this. It was so much pain, so much pain. But I had to remain strong for my children. My mom had to remain strong for me, and then I then I had to remain strong for them all because the one person who which was me was suffering, and they needed me to be better so that they could be better, and that's when I decided to like you know I've got I've got to fight now. So it's that thing of having a purpose bigger than you. Yes, that got you through it. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And what was that process like? Because even knowing you need to be stronger for others, mm -hmm. when presumably you're at your weakest in the sense that you're totally lost. You know, you mm -hmm. don't not have the answers. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. How did you get the strength to be stronger for them? I prayed. Yeah. <laughs> I prayed. I took solace in, in the Bible, Christianity. Mm -hmm. I've always been a Christian all my life. I've grown up around that. But I prayed. I asked God for strength. I said, God, please, you know, like, you know, all I ever wanted was to be, a, have a family. That's all I wanted. Yeah. That's all I ever wanted. I don't care about fame, fortune. I don't care about anything like that. I just wanted my family, knowing I could go home to my family. And I feel like everything I ever wanted was just taken from me. And um, and I just felt like, I just felt like, why? You know, like, so, but then it, there was uh, something said to me, you know, well, you've been through a lot in life. You could help others. Mm. And I was like, mm whatever and i brushed and that it off. didn't come from a conversation with anybody no that just came to you came to me yeah it came to me you've been through hell and back in your life you know what so you know so many experiences mm. and you can give back to others from a genuine place yeah that was what was that was the key of everything that was a turning point that's incredible because i think what we see is so many people they and i mean this with respect but they'll then be a victim forever you know one thing yeah. that can absolutely hurt you in the deepest way possible mm -hmm. has the ability to be a gift if you can see it like that yeah 
in time. Yeah. But for other people, you see people turn to drugs, you see them turn mm-hmm. to alcohol, yes. you see 30, 40, 50 years later from that one horrific event, they're mm-hmm. still broken. Yeah, because they, they find different crutches. Yeah. Yeah, they make things their crutch, like alcohol, drugs, be- you know, like sex, whatever it is. Yeah. They find crutch, but I, I found the Bible. Mm. I found God. I found my children. I found a deeper love for my children. I found a deeper love for my family. I found a, I found a, my eyes were open to friendships, which were good for me. Things had purpose now, mm. more meaningful purpose. I realized who weren't my friends. I realized who were my friends. And I realized, I realized what I wanted from life more than ever. And that was to be happy and to make my kids happy and to also make when my contact with other people be meaningful and purposeful and words, how powerful they are. Yeah. Talk to me about that. You said there about, I realized who were my friends. Yeah. People became very selfish and it was all about them. They didn't give me the time to grieve properly. There was times I didn't want to talk to anyone mm. and I wanted space and I didn't get that. And they needed to respect and they, that. They, and they, they, didn't, they didn't respect that. They wanted me to, to be available for them when they needed me to be available. But I'm like, I'm always available for you, but today I'm not because I've just lost my partner. I've just buried someone that I love. I've got to find a way to transform the love yeah. that I still have within me for this person that can't receive it. I don't I don't want to talk to you today. And I'm and I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. And I'm allowed to feel like this because I need to find a way out of this darkness. But they weren't letting me do that. They were just so about their feelings, their emotions, what they wanted from me. And that was the most selfish thing. Mm. I remember at one point I, I wanted to make friends with anybody that I'd ever had a disagreement with. You know, in life you just move away from people and, you, and they've got their reason why you don't talk to that person anymore or they've got a reason why they don't talk to you anymore. But yeah. I wanted to amend loads of friendships. I thought life is too short. It's mm. so so precious. Yeah. So I went and tried to call speak to some people and one person replied back. Um, to my sister, because I didn't find out. I didn't find it, because did it for me. And I just wanted to say to her, you know, whatever happened in the past, I want you to say that I don't mind, you know, we're good, you know? Like, I I, I feel nothing, you know, anymore. I, I, I want you to, I want you to know that I wish you well. That's all I wanted from her. Nice. And she was just like, I don't care about whatever. I've lost, I've lost people in my life, so I don't care. And if you, as, for me, I didn't know about this until two years later, because my sister wouldn't tell me. Mm. And, um, I'm glad she didn't tell me because that was would have been really difficult for me to yeah. to take at that time. Yeah. But you see people when you're going through difficult times, hard times reveals true friends. Mm. And re- I always remember that because mm. it's the truest saying known to man. Truest saying like so hard good. times reveal who's really in your corner and the family is everything. I'm so grateful for them. My sister especially. She was the best. That's so important to, I think, for us all to remember. Like, you can't, people are where they're at in their life. Mm -hmm. And if they're not ready to receive or if they're not ready to come to terms with something or whatever, you got to respect that. And if they're Mm -hmm. not right for you right now, you Mm got to keep moving. Mm -hmm. I think for people like you and I, you know, we spoke about it before. Mm -hmm. We're empaths and we want to be able, we want to forgive. We want to, we do see life as being too short. Yeah. But you've got to realize not everyone's like that. No, no, everyone's like you and, and you can't expect you from everybody else either. We have to have a level of understanding. And if once you have a level, once you understand people, you can understand that's the reason why they're doing what they're doing. So you just can let it go and just mm. move on with your life and get back to you and your purpose. Then we fast forward, like obviously grieving is an ongoing process. So mm-hmm. you're a mother, mm. you are a business owner. You've then, you know, gone to set up um, coaching and live events and mm-hmm. things like that. What's the hardest bit for it all now for you still being able to be there? Because the thing that I'm very mindful myself as a coach Mm -hmm. is you cannot give what you haven't got. Mm. And if you're always giving as a Mm. parent, if you're always giving as a coach, if you're always giving as a business owner, Mm -hmm. that's where you can start to lose a bit of you and your own health, well-being, mindset can Mm -hmm. suffer. Mm -hmm. How's that been for you? So there was a point where I just was just doing, 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 always trying to be available in every single way where where needed. And um I just came went got to burnout. So I decided just to stop. And, and what take was care. burnout for you? What was that time? Anxiety, just like really high levels of anxiety because I felt like I couldn't stop. Like I needed to just keep on going all the yeah. time. And it got me anxious a lot. And I didn't like that feeling because I need to still be there for my children. And my children need their mother to be on point. So I, and it's just too much pressure. What so were I, you anxious about? Not stopping, 
needed to continue, needed to just mm. like that pressure of like you can't keep, yeah, stop. I can't stop. Yeah. Like I've got to keep on going. I've got things to to achieve. I've got the pressures on my back. I even felt like I have my ancestors, you know, because obviously I've come from. I'm a black woman. I've come from you know the line of like my ancestors are slaves. Yeah, so I feel like. My ancestors fought for the, the things that I have now. Like they were beaten, slaves, and they had they had no opportunity. And I've got this opportunity opportunities now. And it's important that I I utilize what they fought for. And and so for me, I just felt like you know what I need to do right for so many people. I need to take advantage of what I've got in front of me. And um, it's important. <laughs> wow, that. That just fuck it. We had this in our <laughs> sessions before. Pack it in, Not many people make me cry, but for some reason she bloody gets me. <laughs> oh. Wow, because it's a big responsibility. That's unbelievable responsibility to carry. That you think about. It wasn't that long ago that you know, just because of the color of your skin, you wouldn't have the opportunities that I have. And you're now, mm. you now feel that pressure. I feel that, yeah, but it's a positive pressure. It's a very positive pressure. And people look at it differently. And I can't stand with people all about, oh, we don't have this one. I've, I've got opportunities. I make opportunities happen for myself. I've got two kids that need to be fed. And, I, and I've got two kids that need to look up to me. And, and they need to carry on after me. Yeah. So therefore, they need to see a positive role model. We can look at what we've lost and we can look at what we've had. But we need to look at what we can what we can achieve from that. Beautiful. And, and that... Do you know, and that, that's something I try and speak about all the time. We can take it for granted that just the fact we woke up with air in our lungs mm -hmm. is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. You've had that with your partner. Yeah. You know, at 24, he dropped down dead. Mm -hmm. But then you've also got, like you said there, that ancestral responsibility of, mm -hmm. you know, we can't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Literally a matter of years ago, yeah. I wouldn't have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And... But it is seeing that as a real beautiful, positive thing. Yes, it is. While we've got it mm -hmm. and not taking it for granted. Mm -hmm. And I always, I've been speaking about this a lot this week, gratitude mm. and the conversation between can gratitude create laziness? Because actually, why would you work for more? If you're grateful mm. that for everything you have now, why do you need to work hard for more? And I think the thing I'm really trying to drum into people, and you've just explained it so well, is it's the gratitude for everything you have that is the motivation to go on to do more. Exactly, exactly. And also, if you are at a place where you're content, yeah, content is fine. It's, you know, being content is just fine. We don't have to be extremely overwhelmed with, with things. We don't have to be that. Correct. Cont being content is just fine. If it means that you just want a three-bedroom house, that's fine. If I remember on one of my Instagram posts on my personal page, um, I said, I spoke about when I lived in a council flat mm -hmm. and my dream was just to get my daughter out to have a, a garden for my little girl. So when I got the council flat, in a council house, I was buzzing because I got the garden. But that was my goal. That was my that was my 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 contentness. You know, that was me right there thinking, this is me. I've reached a million pound goal because my daughter now can play in safety. Because obviously, living in London in the council, people yeah. people getting stabbed all the time. Yep. People getting shot. You know, there was a lot of things happening that I didn't want for my child. So I was like, I'm going back. I'm going back to Leeds where I feel like it's safer here. Yeah. And also, I feel I feel that my daughter will get a house my, with a garden. In a bedroom and not not have a hundred million neighbors in the tower block. Mm. That so my goal was the garden. So when I saw my little girl running around playing in the garden, a sense of <sighs> peace yeah. came over me. Yeah. So your goals are based on what you what brings you happiness. Yeah. And if it is for you to be a millionaire, then start saving and be become a millionaire. It's all within your reach. Yeah. What's so important is that when we don't have happiness, it comes from an expectation not being met. Mm. So on, this is why you often hear about the millionaires are often not happy because mm. they don't have that perfect Michelin star um, restaurant meal that, that mm -hmm. isn't perfect. You will see them be visibly unhappy. Yeah, You're there speaking about just seeing my daughter in a garden, which so many will take for granted, right? Yeah, just seeing her in a garden. That nice brought you feeling. ultimate joy. It did. It does. And do you know what else brings me ultimate joy? I said to my mum the other day, um, 
this uh, this is one that makes me a bit emotional. But quick one: if you are somebody who is genuinely serious about achieving more in their life, remember something that I always say: is listening to a podcast is not enough to actually get your results. Yes, it's great for the inspiration, it's great for the motivation, and indeed, it's great for the education. But in order to get real sustainable change in our life, we need to take action. Now, I've made my membership as affordable as possible. It's just £19 to join us for a trial month. And I just wanted to remind you to click the show notes, to head on over, to sign up today where you can join us, to not only join me every single month for live coaching calls where I'll be giving you tangible exercises, actions for you to go away and implement, as well as you joining a great community with other like-minded individuals to help hold you accountable. Click the link to sign up today. I won't cry, but I... I you can, knows? I've already who beat knows? you to it. Who so knows? Like... Um, but when, when I walk into my house and it's warm and the heating's on and the ga- electric's on, um, there was a time I struggled so hard to keep on the gas and electric because I, w- I was young. I didn't know how to run a house. I had yeah. I got pregnant at 19 and I had her at 20. And I was still a kid. Yeah. Do, 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 you remember, do you remember when you were a child, when you were 20? Yeah. And how old you are now. The difference. And you're completely different. Yeah. You were a baby then. You look yeah. back at how young you yeah. were. You then. thought you knew everything, You right? thought you knew everything. Yeah. And I thought I knew everything. I was in love. I thought I knew everything. And I was like, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm going to have a baby. And then I had the baby. And it was like, whoa. I was like, mom, take your baby home with you now. Why are you leaving her with me? Mm. I, I still felt like a child that my mom needs to take my little sister with her. But it was my baby. And I was so... I was so like like a fish out of water with that experience. Yeah. And I remember m- never knowing how to manage money. I was mm. so bad with money management, so bad. So I would get a contract phone and then I would I would max out my minutes and mm. then I'd I'd go over, then I'd owe extra and I was on a li- I was on income support. So I'd literally have no money to pay the bill. It's either I feed my myself and my child and buy her milk and or or it's either I pay this bill so obviously yeah. i've chose to feed my child and, and buy her milk and yeah, feed yeah. myself and put but then i remember there was times where i couldn't afford gas and electric and my mom used to have to get on the bus to drink to come all the way to me to come and give me money to put my like, gas and electric on and i and i now get emotional when i come in my house sometimes and i don't have to worry about that anymore i've evolved from that space yeah. I've evolved it's, and it signifies it growth. It signifies and growth. Yes, yeah. it does. So the little things mean a lot to me. The little things because I've seen, I've I've taken advantage, I've taken for granted, should I say, mm. moments with my partner mm. when I didn't realize he's twenty four. You don't think he's gonna die? You know, I didn't realize that it was gonna be last moments with him. Yeah. But my last moments with him was so. If if I could turn it into a movie, I know for a fact people would be like, wow, there wouldn't be a dryer in the room because it was so profound, that moment. Like he, if you don't mind me talking about that, um, Please, yeah. he basically, he, I used to say to him, you're always wearing the same stuff. Like there's always training. You're always wearing the same stuff. Like when you come and see me, you know, like wear something different, you know, like wear a different color. And he came and the next day he came. I didn't really think if he listened to me, but he actually did. So he came down because Zachary had these like um, photo shoots um, and his photo shoot was this really cute photo shoot. And it um, it's when they're a baby, they get these like things from like, I think Mother Case do really cute photographs. Mm. And um, he came to come and view the photo to pick one he wanted. And he came dressed in white, head to toe in white, head wow. to toe all white. And I was like, he actually listened but the fact that he was in white yeah completely like it's really weird so that night he came because i was supposed to go out to my friends my friend's sister was going to france so she had a, like a leaving party mm. and um and so i was supposed to go but he he was like i've got to go out with my mates so i'm like well, so we argued that night like you know you came down to look after the baby while i go out like why did you do that yeah. so he went out and my mom said just bring the baby to me and i'll look after them whatever so we did i went out he went out and he came back the next morning and i was just like not wanting to let him in because i was just angry at him i'm not letting you in he's yeah. like please i'll because I'll, I'll buy you some um i'll buy i'll buy a chinese and we'll have a night and i was like all right post the money for the door then <laughs> and money did, first I money first and he and he did he first I was like, all right go on then come on then <laughs> just for proof yeah just for proof i was like go on then he goes all right fine and then i let him in and then um we uh 
we were talking and stuff and I was kind of like, why'd you do that kind of thing? And I, he's like, Karen, don't, please don't tell me off too much. We've already been arguing for ages now, let's just chill. I was like, you know what, okay, I'll just chill. Because before I would go toe to toe with him in an argument and mm. I'd always want to win. Mm. But at this point, I just felt like, nah, I'm not going to do it. He's, he knows I'm upset and that's that. Mm. So the next day, so the same day, I went to, we were upstairs to bed, had a little nap, whatever, because obviously when you've got a baby throughout the night, the night before, sorry, my son, two nights before, sorry, my son was in um, Ainey because mm. he was not very well. So he came back and we were just chilling. And then um, I started crying um, because I felt like, I don't know, I just felt really upset because he was leaving to go back to train at uh, like five o'clock. And um, he held me in my, he held me in his arms like for about, two minutes but those two minutes were long and it was a tight squeeze and my tears were just flowing from my eyes and it wet his whole, whole um, shoulder and he goes you know what Karen you're so amazing everything I've been such an idiot and you deserve the absolute world and it's all my fault that I've made you feel like this and he said um I said he goes he goes please don't ever think you've done anything wrong because I used to blame myself for things that he did wrong sometimes because mm. uh, I felt like I was the bigger person and I needed to be better because he suffered with um, bipolar. Mm. Um, so I had to kind of like be quiet sometimes to because he, he suffered mentally. Mm. So um, he said to me, he goes, he goes, you are an amazing person and I'm so glad you're the mother of my child. And um, and then he left. I said, so I grabbed Zachariah and I wanted him to see us at the door when he left to remember what he's leaving to make sure that when he comes, so he will always have a positive picture of us in his mind. And Zachary said, but say bye bye to daddy. Zachary was six months old. And then he looked at us and he put his head down because he was like, oh, you know, I'm going to miss them. And then he drove off and that was the last time I saw him alive. And that was the last time I saw him alive. And I've never shared that story with, um, with anybody. So you got an exclusive there, Matt. <laughs> Oh, but yeah beautiful. yeah so he um he my relationship with him was very complex and i understand bipolar yeah. i understand adhd i understand mental health and this is why a lot of the time with my clients i i can see yeah. more yeah. than the average coach can mm. and that's why i think i get such great results you know because my use my like i like that time i said to you i'm going to you know, you know more. You got, you know, from a genuine a place, what what it's like to be a single mother, mm. what it's like to be a young mum, what it's like to do with mental health in a relationship, what it's like to lose somebody, what what it's like to love somebody, and where to invest that love, what it's like to find yourself in a whole world of chaos, mm. and but you know, some people choose to give up, and they because they find no way out, but there is, there is. There is, there is people that care. There are people that love you. Regard, it could be a stranger that could show you so much love. And it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing, Ca empathy and and um, and compassion. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it moves my, in my favorite word is love. Because love really does conquer all. It really does. And you just, it, like love just oozes out of you. And this is what, <laughs> I think it's so important for people to hear today listening to you is it's not come from a place of it being easy. Mm -mm. It's come from a place, I guess, from you realize through it all, through the toughest times, the mm -hmm. hardest times, yeah. love is the most important thing, you it know, is. to be compassionate, to have empathy, to be caring and to give love. Yeah. Which is why it almost seems unfathomable that I know we've spoke about, you've had hate, mm. you've had trolls. I have, yeah. Yeah. How could somebody that not only has been through so many difficult things in her life, but used it for good mm. to empower others, mm -hmm. how can she get hit? Because I, I believe it's nothing to do with me. It's nothing to do with me. It's about the individual. Why would you, in your right mind, why would you go and troll someone even if somebody has upset you why would you go on social media and use your platform to troll someone just why would you do that i agree i think there's why a level would you do that it's nothing to do with me they need the people that have ever trolled mm -hmm. or certainly whilst they're trolling at that stage in their life there's unresolved issues and they need professional help 100 percent, 100 percent. because you know i think for me the things that i was trolled about it was it was only one period of time in my life where 
I had the first award show yeah. and I didn't have a team. Well, I had a team and the team weren't doing their job properly. They mm. were doing, they they were told they need to give out booklets and they need to do this, they need to do that. And they didn't do it. They were outside having cigarettes and stuff. And I didn't know that because I had to be present in the awards, but it was my first one. So I there were mistakes made, yep. but now I've got a whole team that I've mm. hired. But I learned, I evolved, I got better. It got better and better, but people weren't so forgiving. But those they, people they, aren't putting on their own events. They're not yeah, learning. Yeah. They're not evolving. Yeah, it's but easy to them, criticize. Exactly. So I feel like they came with an expectation, yeah. and their expectation wasn't met at that first instant. Got you. And it was something small, but to them it was something big. Mm. So I feel like for I, I feel like they had their own reasons why they were upset. Mm. You know, mm. and and I think you know what and I that's understand. Fine. I understand. You know, yeah. yeah, but to go and troll someone. That's you know, to go and troll, it's, it's strange, especially to troll somebody on the anniversary of the person, of the partner's death, and you're well aware of that. Yeah. And to try to kick somebody who's got to b b raise kids, mm. and who's got to basically, you know, try to destroy someone's reputation mm. as well mm. and make up lies. I think with that, that person knowing that they're made, they've made up lies to, to, to destroy someone would, for me, I feel like, it really is not really with me. It's just not with me. But I'm grateful, mm. back to that gratitude, I'm yeah. grateful that that isn't me. Yeah. I'm grateful that it was lies. Mm. I'm grateful that it was, they had to do what they had to do to to make a story to make themselves feel better because if it was true, then the, the, work, the, the work would need to be done within myself. And also I'm grateful for my haters and trolls as well mm -hmm. because I think it's inevitable. Like if you're gonna, like you do, you put on massive events, you're helping mm -hmm. people, you're on social media. If you're gonna put yourself out there, you're gonna get a level of it. Mm -hmm. The sooner you can get it, the sooner you can deal with it. You can realize yeah. it's not about you, mm -hmm. it's about them. Because yeah. again, someone can listen to that, understand it intellectually, okay. Mm -hmm. But when it's your name, when they're mentioning you, mm -hmm. your partner, your family, mm -hmm. and I've had the same mm -hmm. stuff, logic don't play a part, emotion comes in emotion, and, and yeah. it feels horrific. It does, I, the first I, yeah. time. Yeah, the first time it happened, I couldn't get out of bed. Really? I, I, had, to, I had to, I was so, I was so distraught by what had happened. And um, and I will never forget the loyalty from um, Rosie, as well, Rosie um, Courtney, she was amazing. Her loyalty, I will never, ever forget that. Julie Zanetti, she was absolutely key to that loyalty. My sister and Jordan Wake, those three people, mm. I will never forget their loyalty to me at that point. It meant everything. Everything when it feels like the world's against, against you. you. Those yeah. people's loyalty, they were loyal. Like they went, they rode hard for me. And I will never, because they knew the truth yeah. because they worked closely with me. So they knew everything was lies. Yeah. So it was like, why are they doing yeah. this? Like, why? And they couldn't take it. And the, what the funny thing was, you know, God is so good because when, when they were trolling me, the people that they were trolling, they, or the platform that they were doing it on, um, <laughs> um, there was a police officer on there. And really? yeah, and she was like, I've had enough of this because she's she was part of it as well. Like she's like, I've had enough of this. This is harassment. Right. Call the police now, and oh, yeah. it went away. <laughs> I've mm -hmm. never had never been told again because it was not true. It was yeah. a load of lies. So I just think people sometimes need to build their own narrative to to make the sense of their their world around them. So, but I'm just glad it was a load of lies anyway because if it was true, as I said before, the work would have to be done in me, mm -hmm. and I and I'd mm -hmm. need to do the I'd have to do the work to be better. But I guess I guess you in that time you also learn how to not let things affect you. Mm. Because I let it affect me when I knew it was lies, but I think my business meant more to me than I realized. Right. That brought, because in any bad situation, you got to look at the positives. And that I needed to learn something in that instant. My business meant too much to me, mm. right? I love my business, but it's not the be all and end all of me. Mm. It's a part of me. It's yeah. a branch of me, yeah. of me, but an extension of me. Yeah. It's not me. So I realized now my love and all my devotion goes into the charity beginning at home home mm. whatever i give from them i give get outside of home it's just an extension of me and if it, if a branch falls another one can grow again simple as Beautiful. that so to bringing it back to you mm -hmm. let's talk briefly about dating <laughs> you're a ceo let's go <laughs> let's do it <laughs> let's go hey carol <laughs> hey, you got a girl now matt you had your chance stop, stop it matt stop it you had your chance <laughs> <laughs> You're a, you're a CEO, mm -hmm. you've got, you know, multiple businesses, mm -hmm. you coach other people, mm -hmm. you're a mother. Yes. Do you get time to meet anybody? Like, no. 
<laughs> yeah, because this is a reality, I right? I think we should discuss. I do get, I, I do get people um, asking me out on dates and stuff, um, but I, and it's taken me a time to know what I want, you know. Yeah. Um, to and know what know I what really what want. want. I know now what I want. I want someone that's gentle, someone that's kind, mm. someone that's thoughtful, someone that's family orientated. Someone that's intelligent, sexy, intelligence and sexy. I like to learn from people and I want someone to learn from me. But I want to feel safe. You know, I want to feel safe to love and to be vulnerable with that person. And that person just ha having my back. I want that. And, I, and if I don't have it, I, I'm happy to be alone. Happy to be alone. I've made peace with that because I don't, I'm not going to, love can make you or break you. And I'm not going to sacrifice myself for love mm. or for meaning meaningless relationships mm. just to um, say you have somebody. just to say i have yeah a, a fun fact about me i've been abstinent from sex for eight years as okay. well and the last person i slept with was my my son's dad who passed away and i want i won't be with anybody until i feel the right person's come along Mm. I value myself enough to know I don't want anything that's not meaning meaningful. Mm. I want meaningful relationships. Everything in my life is meaningful. Step out the door. I'm doing this podcast. It's meaningful. Mm. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing life, and I'm going out to do look after my children. It's meaningful relationships. I I work in my job, and it's a meaningful job. I do events. Meaningful job. Meaningful platforms for people. You know, it's going to change people's lives if they win an award and they become award winning or multiple award winning. You know, it's enhancing their lives in a in a good way. So that's meaningful so why should i pick something that's not meaningful in regards to yeah. the person I'm, i lay down it with would and be build incongruent a wouldn't it exactly it wouldn't be exactly and a lot of people would be like you don't have sex you need to go get a, a, a sex buddy or whatever and i'm just like no i don't want that i don't want it's that just meaningless pleasure why should why should i why should i be with someone and let my children see guys coming in and out of the house no i wouldn't dream of that and not only that even if i was to go some like a hotel or whatever with a guy that doesn't mean anything to me it doesn't mean anything i want i want to find my husband i want to find my life partner my companion i want that because i've had it before and i'm not gonna i'm not comparing him to the next guy but i mean like i want something meaningful mm. i'm a i know what i bring to the table mm. And I want I want him to match my vibe. Simple as that. You spoke before about the butterfly analogy. Yes, my butterfly mode. Talk to us about that <laughs> and, and where you're at with that. Yeah, so this is my own personal thing, my own personal journey. Yeah. So I call it the cocoon mode. The cocoon stage is when you are going through difficult things in life and you have to figure out within yourself where 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 you where you need to be so you need to retreat sometimes sometimes you just go within yourself and figure out how to get out of the things that you've built which is the cocoon mm. limited beliefs anxiety fear um self-judgment insecurities goals that you haven't reached why haven't you reached them and i've I found myself in that space before where i've had to block myself away from everybody and just work on myself it's a really good reflective time and that's the cocoon stage mm. but as but as you but when it's time to get out of the cocoon stage it's not easy you've got to fight through so you've yeah. got to break down the limited belief yeah. you've got to work on how to get out of that limited belief you've got to work on how to fight the anxiety you've got to work on how to deal with the grief you've got to learn how to compartmentalize things and actually deal with it not just not just you know like overlook it deal through yeah, it go very through different it, yeah. go through it so that's the cocoon stage but then when you when you break out you're the butterfly and it's beautiful it mm. flies around and it's never you've never seen an ugly butterfly yeah. they're beautiful they're gracious they're pretty like like a spring fresh day mm. you see some a butterfly just flying around it's just everyone's like oh butterfly you admire it you appreciate it you value it and that's what and that's where i am right now with self-development i'm at the butterfly stage because i've done the work yeah i've done all the work and it's hard i'm, I'm still learning i'm still developing myself but i've done a lot of the work and i can give back to others so right now i might do my little butterfly giving a little sprinkle wherever i can and that's where the coaching comes in that's where the events come in and that's where anything i do comes in Talk to us about your event. You've got a, an award ceremony. It'll be yeah. two weeks from when this episode goes out. Yes. What's it about? How can we get involved? Can we go? Where do we get tickets? Tell yeah, us everything. Yeah, you can. Um, so you can go get tickets from my Simply Ladies website. Simply Ladies, no, simplyladiesawards.com. 
and go there. Yeah. And um, basically, it's all about women empowerment and empowering women from the north. We will be doing an awards show in October in London as well because we've got Amazing. people all over. And just remind him actually, didn't I get almost someone wanted to nominate me? And he was like, "He's not a woman. He's we a can't man. do it. He's it's a not going to work." There was something you yeah. told me that a few yeah, months yeah, ago. Yeah, they did. They tried to nominate you. At least you've been nominated. If someone cared, I'll, I'll you had it. quite a few. That'll yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, basically, it's empowering women from the north. Yeah. Um, women who are in the community, women who are Instagram stars, women who are um, who are small businesses, mm. like all sorts of, all sorts of women, like empowering them. Um, Jenny Powell is hosting it, amazing. which is amazing, yep. and um, she's so so nice. She's so she just goes around to everybody in the crowd. She makes sure she meets everyone, talks to everybody. She's such a nice person. Um, I've got an amazing team behind me as well, which is Quirky Frog. They are so good. They are ah, oh, they are my <laughs> the backbone of the event because yeah, I yeah. can't do it all on my own anymore. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But it's just a platform for women to feel celebrated mm. and to really be seen for the work that they do. And that's important to me, really important. Really important, especially if ones are in the community. Yeah. People like, you know, that are working at feeding the homeless, people that are doing things behind the scenes that no one sees. You know, this is your time to get that spotlight on what you're doing really really about empowering women in businesses amazing and, and life in general and i was at the one you did in was it july yeah the fashion show yeah, the, yeah that the, event was great yeah the, it was in september september was september, it september yeah september Ta fashion week darling fashion yeah. week fashion week darling yes. of course it makes perfect sense yeah. um Caron, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we're going to have to shoot because we're going to do a bonus members only Yay. interview. So we need to make time for that. If you do want to check that out, don't forget to head over to richinsuccess.com. Click on the membership area. Um, before we do finish this interview, though, mm. um, just tell people, I know you said there about Simply Ladies and your events. Where can people find you if they want to learn more about you and what you have to offer? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, can they get you on Instagram, that sort of stuff? Yeah, so of my, I've got two Instagrams. So we've got, for, for anything to do with Simply Ladies, it's um, Simply Ladies Inc. Yeah, that's where I'm. Instagram, Twitter, all of that. Um, and then for me, it's coached by Karen. Not Karen, Karen. Get it right, man. Karen. C A double R R O N. C A double R O N. Yeah. C A double R O N. Let's yeah. get it down. Caron. Get it right. Yes, man. exactly. Coach by Caron. Yeah, and that, you can find so me on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Final question before we finish. Okay, what is it? Caron, not mm -hmm. Karen. Mm hmm. What is your definition of success? Wellness. Health is wealth right yeah. take care of your health make sure that you have healthy relationships healthy bank balance healthy goals healthy healthy mindset your health is the most important thing yeah. you know it's so important i'm on my journey right now to become the more healthier version of me taking care of my immune system taking care of my vitamins and making sure that i'm taking them my kids are taking them eating eating um for three meals a day, three, three meals a day, and make sure I have healthy snacks. Mm -hmm. Like what you put into your body, you know, all that's of your nutrition. Just making sure that you're you're taking care of your health, because once you're well, then everything else will be well around you. And taking care of you as a person, and then everything else will benefit. So yeah, health is wealth. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. And if you want to hear even more from Caron, she has very kindly agreed to do an exclusive members only interview, specifically giving her tips on how you can overcome adversity. She gives a really, really insightful and personalized story and helps to understand how we can truly keep on moving forward, even in very difficult times. Check out this preview. We've heard it, cancel culture, right? One wrong word, <laughs> one wrong thing said, that can be your whole career gone. But I don't believe in the cancel culture. Maybe we'll say the uncancelled cancel culture because I don't <laughs> believe in that at all. I believe that you're a human, you made a mistake. As long as you're willing to be um, accountable for your mistake yep. and you're ready to move on and do better, then we can be friends. That, just that little bit of love and understanding, you know? is in it can be the, the most crucial bit between life and death for somebody you know people I, I i really despise this i'm a strong person built business it's not about that it's, it's about understanding you are human yeah. 
and that as a human to get by in this world that we sometimes need people. Okay, so if you want to hear that episode in full alongside multiple other exclusive bonus interviews, all you need to do is sign up to become a Rich in Success member today. You can click the link in the show notes or head on over to richinsuccess.com. Click on the membership area to sign up. Not only will you get to listen to all the bonus interviews, you'll also get access to over 50 training videos to help you with your life, your relationships, your wealth, your happiness, your health, as well as live Zoom coaching calls every single month. Head on over to richinsuccess.com or click the link in the show notes below and I will look forward to welcoming you into the community. Now, also don't forget these episodes are every single week, so please make sure you've hit the subscribe button on whichever platform that you watch or listen to the podcast on. And I will look forward to seeing you next week on the next episode as the journey of self-discovery and personal growth continues. I'll see you then.